Welcome back to another edition of Combat Corner, where we're talking everything. Mixed martial arts, bare knuckle fighting, UFC, PFL, boxing, you name it. Combat sports. This is where you come for your combat sports content. UFC 306 is on tap this Saturday night in Las Vegas at the Sphere. This is the card that Dana White says will be like nothing you've ever seen. They have spent a fortune in putting this together. Yeah, I guess they have. I will tell you this before I jump in. Thank you to everyone for subscribing to our channel. We are working our way to 5,000 subscribers and looking to put out a lot more combat corner content. I'm a humongous mixed martial arts and combat sports fan, BKFC. We will be at BKFC 66 this Friday at the Hollywood Hard Rock Live. Go check that out. UFC 306 has been billed as a spectacle, right? It's at the Sphere. The Sphere, from what I've seen in videos, is a venue like no other. I've heard people comment about it for concerts. They say it's amazing. They say the chairs vibrate. All kinds of crazy shit goes on at the Sphere. So, of course, Dana White has to have an event there, and he wanted to be the first one to do a fight there. Now, what would be the first thing that you might need for an event like this? A big main event. I'm sorry, but I am out of trust the UFC points. I'm out of believe the shit they're selling. I love MMA. And one of the things that has bothered me so much of late about the UFC in particular, because they are the leader of MMA and they will always be, and they will always put on the best cards for the most part and have the best fighters, but stop trying to feed me chicken shit and call it chicken salad. Stop trying to feed me a hamburger and call it filet mignon. I'm tired of having the UFC feed us a bowl of goods on a card that doesn't come close to matching the hype behind it. First, it was UFC 300, where I made a hyperbolic statement saying it was the worst promoted card ever. Obviously, that's not the case. But for what it had been sold to be, the bowl of goods that were provided, the fights themselves, mediocre. You can sit here and tell me, oh my God, what about the Max Holloway, Justin Gaethje fight? Max Holloway was kicking Justin Gaethje's ass. The only reason you remember that fight, look me in my eyes as I tell you, the only reason you remember that fight is because Max Holloway had the fucking stones to give Justin Gaethje one last chance in the final 10 seconds and say, let's go right here and just throw caution to the wind. He gave Justin Gaethje that chance in a fight that he had absolutely dominated. I will say I was shocked that he dominated it. And I wasn't having, I didn't have an issue with the fight itself, per se. I think the BMF belt is stupid. It's a gimmick that was sold to people to pay for a pay-per-view featuring Jorge Masvidal and Nick Diaz. Because they had no title shot, title for that card. The only way you can get away with not having a title on the line in a main event for a pay per view is one, Conor McGregor, because he sells. Even if he's complete garbage now, in the opinion of many, he still sells. And if he fought Michael Chandler tomorrow, he'd be the main event and people would buy, there'd be 1.5 million buys, maybe 2 million. Because of Conor McGregor. 
So one is Conor McGregor, and two is a title shot. What did the UFC do then? They created a gimmick, BMF, baddest motherfucker. Get out of here, dude. How can you be the baddest motherfucker with like 17 losses and 15 losses? The baddest motherfucker is the champion in their division. That's the baddest motherfucker. So they sold that gimmick. Masvidal wins that belt. Fights again. Did he win another? He didn't win another fight after that. That's what makes the whole thing an absolute joke. The man who's named the BMF, the baddest motherfucker, and look, all respect to Jorge Masvidal, he parlayed a three-fight win streak into multi-millions in dollars. Multi-million dollars. I mean, crazy amounts of money. And by the way, I thought he won the boxing match with Nate Diaz rather clearly, <clears throat> for which I think he made like $20 million on that. But you're talking about a guy who beat Nate Diaz and then lost to Usman, Usman, Colby and Gilbert Burns. And realistically, got his ass kicked in all of them. Got his ass kicked in all of them. So how is the baddest motherfucker leaving the UFC on a, on a four-fight losing streak? But he doesn't lose his BMF belt. So the BMF belt matters for that. But it did, but you but it wasn't on the line when he fought for the welterweight championship against Kamar Usman twice. It wasn't on the line when he had a grudge match with Colby Covington and got his ass kicked. It wasn't on the line when he fought Gilbert Burns and lost that one too. So what did they do? They turned this into the was it, the, was it Dustin Poirier and, and Justin Gaethje again? BMF. Justin Gaethje wins via, you know, with the with the big uh, was a head kick, um, if I recall correctly. He he won via he, he planted Justin he planted Dustin Poirier. I think it was a head kick, right? Uh, if I can recall, yeah, head kick. He plants just Dustin Poirier with a head kick. He wins the BMF belt. Then he defends the BMF belt against Max. UFC 300 was so desperate for fights that they created a fight between a 45er and a 55er and made the BMF belt. And that was potentially going to be the main event. That was potentially going to be the main event. Thank God for Alex Pereira, who steps up and gives us a title fight against Jamal Hill. Knocks him out in three minutes. The Zhang Wei Li fight where Zhang, Zhang Zhenan was never going to be the main event. Never. And if that had been the only real title shot on the line, there's no way that would have been the main event over Max Holloway and Justin Gaethje. No one, would, no one was buying that fight card to see those two fight. That would have been the perfect fight in Asia, in China, in Japan, out there. For Vegas, for Vegas, three hundred UFC three hundred. The fight wasn't close. Fight was wipeout, as expected. I know there was a period where Jean, you know, Jeanon had a one good round, and but otherwise she got completely dominated. That card was a massive dud disappointment, in my opinion. Why? Because of what it was sold to be. See, understand that when you sell a bowl of goods, the goods should be actually worth something. When Bo Nickel is fighting Cody Brundage on the first fight of the main card of a pay-per-view that you claim is the greatest card in the history of the company, you're insulting our intelligence. But of course, there's thousands and millions, there's millions of, 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 of UFC fans fans who buy all that shit hook, line, and sinker, they'll sit here and say the Devison Figueredo, Cody Garbrandt fight was a great fight because Cody Garbrandt was a champion eight years ago or however many years ago it was. They'll say that the Bobby Green fight with Jim Miller was a great fight, even though both guys are completely washed out. 
and Bobby Miller is fighting a geriatric and Jim Miller, who's old as hell, should freaking retire. They'll sit here and say that Jessica Andrade versus Marino Rodriguez. Nobody cared. And I don't like Connell Jalen Turner. I mean, watched Jalen Turner basically give away a fight. Diego Lopez and Sadiq Yusef. Diego Lopez is a fun fighter to watch. I like him. I, I absolutely love I, I like watching him fight. Kayla Harrison, Holly Holm. Come on now. If I had known that Holly Holm was going to look so damn old, so damn fast, there's no way in the world that I would have thought she had a shot and should have won in that fight. She looked like she was 100 in that fight. And then you have the Aljo fight against Calvin Cater. You, then you have the Aljo fight with um, Calvin Cater, and that fight in itself was not interesting at all. Although I think it spoke violence about Aljo, but he didn't really do much. Yuri Prohatska, Alexander Rockage, to me, was the fight of the night. It was the best fight on the card. It was the absolute best fight on the card. It was a competitive ass fight. It was a better fight than the Max Justin fight because Max kicked Justin Gaethje's ass. It's just the reality. Saruki and Oliveira, that was a good fight. But for the most part, that card was, it wasn't, I tell you right now, I mean, they can sit here and say, oh, they had eight former champions, blah, blah, blah. blah. Give a shit about that. I don't care about champions that were champions forever ago. I don't care about that. That stuff. I want to see fights that actually lead to championships. If you're going to tell me that something's the best, I want to see contender versus contender, contender versus contender. Content. Hell, realistically, that whole damn fight, the, the, the top five fights should have all been for titles. But they scheduled poorly, and this is what you got. And they sold this to you, told you it was amazing. And the only reason you remember the card is because Max Holloway. Gave Justin Gaethje a chance. Then you move into International Fight Week in UFC 303. And UFC 303 was realistically as well. International Fight Week should be better than that. Your, your co-main event should not be Diego Lopez versus Dan Ige. And all the credit to both of those guys for fighting. And Ige for stepping up on a day, a day's note, the, the day of. Incredible. But these other fights, Roman deletes the Anthony Smith. That fight got rescheduled. Anthony Smith loses to a middleweight. A middleweight who took the fight on a week's notice. Macy Chasson and Mark. I mean, I'm not trying to disrespect fighters because I have ultimate respect for fighters. But I'm also looking at it from a perspective of you're marketing a product to people and telling people how great it is, and they just buy it. Even Ian Machado, Gary, Michael Venom Page was one of the worst fights we've seen in a while. It was terrible. And the rest of the card was bleh, whatever. Whatever. It was, a, it was a whatever card. Nothing that you would sit here and say, oh, my God, what an amazing card, top to bottom, in name value, in not in name value, but in, in name value and in championship opportunity, right? So now we got this card here, another one, UFC 306, Noche UFC, Riyadh season. What the hell does that mean? What does that even mean? How do we combine the two things together? Riyadh season with a Mexican thing. Like, How does that even go together, right? And it's at the sphere, and you have 10 fights on this card. 10. And there's a the reason the fight card has still, as of four days ago, via Forbes, has not sold out yet. Despite the fact it's supposed to be the greatest spectacle ever. You're going to see things you've never seen before. And I'm sure we will. I'm sure the production of this event will be out of control. I, I, I have no doubt. You're going to see fighters looking... I'm just curious if you're laying on the bottom of on the cage and you see up in the sky and you see yourself fighting, like, are you looking at the screen on the roof while you're fighting? Does it get you dizzy? Does it get you disoriented? It's not a typical arena where you have a circle around it. It's a stage type of situation. 
surrounded by nothing but screens all over the roof. It'll be crazy. I'm sure it will. But Sean O'Malley and Marab Devas, Marab, I mean, eh, I think Marab's going to dominate him. I, I could be wrong. I, I thought, I mean, I thought Aljo would be Sugar Sean too, but I think Marab's going to dominate him. I think he's going to take him out and destroy him. It's my opinion. And that's the fun, I mean, they, they, they're they cute and they're, they're build up. They make their little videos and stuff like that. The UFC's promotion of this card, it's been fucking terrible. It's been terrible. You know about it. But tell me a fight beyond the first three. Did you even know it only had 10 fights on it? Did you know that the tickets for floor seats for this event, when they announced it, face value seats were $12,507 to $17,507? The 100 the, the, the hundred level, $3,007 to $12,507. The 200 level, $3,507 to $5,007. Can you imagine the upper deck for... The 300 level, $3,007 to 5507 The 400, there's a 400 level, and the tickets were initially priced at $2,257 to $3,507. Does it fit in the sky? The UFC has been raising the prices up your ass. And people buy it, but they're not buying this one. So you know what's happened? The prices have been dropped. So what if what do you say if you're a person who purchased these tickets face value three months ago for these outrageous prices? And now you're seeing that the floor seats that were previously 12 to 17 grand are now 4,400 to 9,500. The 100 level is 1,600 to 4,500. The 200 is 3,300 to 1,000. The, the 300 level is 2400 to 1000 I, I, the 400 level is 1767 to 757 these are the new prices that they have changed from something they had an initial face value do they give refunds on that but look at the card itself look at the card itself Dana White predicted a live gate for could be anywhere from 25 to 27 million yeah you're charging people a fortune it's a ripoff. And it'll still be a live gate expected of about 21 million because they had to lower the prices. The UFC has apparently invested 20 million dollars. Why? This is ego. This isn't business. This this event is not a business event. This is I'm gonna do this before anybody else. And I'm gonna spend whatever I have, no matter how I'm, I'm, we're gonna lose money here. We're gonna take the L. We're gonna take the L. We're going to take it because you know who should have been on this card? John Jones versus Tom Aspinall. That's who should be on this card. That's who should be on this card. There were over a thousand tickets still re remaining. And of course, it'll probably sell out just before the event on Saturday. But. <sighs> I don't know, man. I, I look at this as they say it's a one-time deal. But look at the fights. Sean O'Malley, Marav de Valashvili. Okay. Co-main event. Alexa Grasso versus Valentina Shevchenko. We've seen this fight twice already. And I get it. They're running a Mexican theme. They're going to have a bunch of Mexican fighters except for them. We're going to have a bunch of Mexican fighters except for the main event. <laughs> that features an American with purple and blue hair against the guy from Georgia, the country. Yeah. So Alexa Grasso against Shevchenko, we've seen that fight twice before. I don't really care about seeing this fight again. I thought Grasso won the lap, both of the fights. I thought she won the second fight too. The next fight, the third fight, Brian Ortega versus Diego Lopez. Diego Lopez, like I said, fun fighter. Absolutely fun. I thought they put Dan Ige in this card too because of the fact that he gave them, did them a solid. He's not on the card. I'm actually kind of surprised about that. Brian Ortega, though, I won't believe he's fighting until he shows up in the cage. Because I'm not trusting that he'll cut weight properly or something else. I, he, he's so hit and miss. I love watching Brian Ortega fight. But 
he's also one that you're like, is he going to show up? Because he's just so – he's all over the place. And I and I think and I think if he does show up, I think he wins the fight. I think Grasso wins. I think Ortega is going to win. Lopez is a is a savage. I think Ortega beats him. I thought Ige gave Lopez all kinds of problems on a, on four hours notice or whatever that was. And then you have the next two fights in the main card: Daniel Zell, who I've seen fight versus Esteban Ribovic. Like they're good fighters, but this is the main card of a card you're charging people. Three mortgage payments to go to. The the main the first fight of the main card, Ronaldo Rodriguez against Adi Osborne. Ronaldo Rodriguez has one UFC fight. He's on the main card because he's Mexican. Adi Osborne is four and four in the UFC. This is your main card. Esteban Ribovich has two fights in the UFC. Daniel Zellhuber is three and one in the UFC. Then you look at the prelims, Irena Aldana against Norma Dumont. I mean, yeah, it's a decent fight. Is Irena Aldana making you buy tickets? Fuck no. Manuel Torres against Ignacio Bahamondes. Yasmin Yarugui versus Ketlin Sosa. Again, you have more fighters that no one's really ever heard of. And I get it. We're going to keep this Mexican theme going on. Why we cho- Why they chose to do this, I mean, that's their. that was their call. I, I guess that, you know, it is a Mexican holiday, I guess, this weekend. Um, I'm going to confirm that. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, Mexican, in the, Mexican independence is the 15th. So, I, you know, I get it. I understand. But it doesn't mean you can't have <laughs> fights that don't feature a Mexican fighter. You're fighting in the United States, last I checked. UFC is, the, is, a, is an American organization. The, the last fight, Edgar Chavez against Joshua Vaughn. The one that's – and then you have the early prelims. There's only one fight in the early prelims. It's Raul, Raul Rosas Jr. versus – I'm not even trying to pronounce that name. I couldn't. I'm not even trying. I would think that Raul Rosas would be on the main, on the main card. He's a face. He's a known guy. He's a known guy. And he's the early prelim. Yeah, this this fight card. I'll watch it. I watched them all. But again, you're selling people a bowl of goods. That's there could be 10 knockouts here, and I won't care. Realistically, there could be 10 knockouts here, and I will not care. I won't. None of these first seven, none of these first seven fights are going to produce a contender. Like your next number one contender. If Diego Lopez beats Brian Ortega, you still don't have a number one contender from that fight. Heck, Ortega could win, and you still may not have a number one contender from that fight. See where I'm getting at? But this is now the third... Biggest card of ever this year, this calendar year, and it's the third overall mediocre level card. This one's probably the worst of the of these. This one is the worst of the of the 300 and 303. 303. This is worse because there's only 10 fights on this card. So your your dollar per fight is really, really hot. It is what it is. It's not a surprise. And it goes back to, again, the promotion of this event. Yeah, we've seen random commercials, but when is the UFC going to go back to doing a world tour like they did with Conor and Jose Aldo? When are they going to start building their fighters, promoting their fighters? You can't. Conor is a special human. You have to promote these guys. That is on you. You're the organization. You're the promoter. How do you do that? You do these tours. This is supposed to be a big, big car. Sean O'Malley Marab would have been so much fun watching go on a tour. It would have been a circus. It would have been a fucking circus. And you blew that opportunity to do that with these two guys. I'm not saying you're going to go across the world. 
You could have gone to four city tour in the U.S. Go to Miami, go to New York, go to L.A., go to Dallas, go to Chicago, something like that, and then or and 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 then you end up in Vegas or whatever. Five city tour. You could rock that shit in a week. We can have two weeks. You didn't do it. They haven't done that since Conor and Aldo. Remember John Jones and Daniel Cormier get into a fight in the lobby of he was the MGM Grand. That's that's you can't that is promotion. You got one guy saying, I will literally kill you. I would spit right in your face. Like these, we need where is that promotion for these fights? But they'll make a video and say that I'm. A, I think nothing to fight. This has nothing to do with the fighters. This has to do with the UFC trying to continue continue to raise the price of tickets. They're gonna price out their fans. I don't know who the f- bro to afford a ticket that costs in the upper deck when they first let these out to charge someone twenty two hundred to thirty five hundred dollars before fees. You're talking $5,000 to $7,500 for these upper deck tickets? Who the hell can afford that? You think that the professional athletes that go to these fights are going to sit up there? No, they're going to want those twelve dollars to $17,000 tickets that you probably comp them. So you have their faces in the crowd. But your average UFC fan cannot afford to go to this fight. This is like the Super Bowl, which the average person can't go to. But hey, y'all know more than me. Y'all are the billionaires. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I know what I care about, and I care about great fights. I like fights that have meaning. There's a reason I don't enjoy having 50-some-odd fight cards a year. There's too many fighters, there's too many cards, and way too many of these cards are completely watered down. Why they continue to use the Apex for UFC fight nights is ridiculous. Watching Gilbert Burns fight Sean Brady at the Apex on Saturday was a joke. The fight was a whooping. Brady kicked Gilbert Burns' ass, and I hope Gilbert Burns retires. Because I'm tired of seeing him. I, I, I mean, after the like, he lost in Miami... I thought for sure he was done. But that, but that's a fight that you put as a main event in a fight night. But we're going to have these damn cards at the apex still. It's ridiculous that these cards are still going on at the apex. It doesn't take that. Then the white created a fucking island to have fights in Abu Dhabi. And he did that shit faster than they have changed to go back to using... Cities and arenas for UFC fight nights. Every UFC fight night should be at some city around this country. UFC fight nights, in my opinion, should be in this country. Because it's obviously, you know, you have costs, all this, all those other things. Or if you go do it in wherever else, it's nothing but fighters from those, those countries. But this, this shit's not... This, Outside of the Contender Series and the Ultimate Fighter, which I think Ultimate Fighter should also be scrapped. It's done. It's long over. It's long over with. I, I mean, I, I don't have any. I, I the Ultimate Fighter as a series, they should get rid of it because the Contender Series. Like, why would I want to do the Ultimate Fighter when I can go fight in the Contender Series one night, get and, and win, and get a contract? Because remember, the Contender Series used to be easy. we're going to give one contract. I they give four or five contracts every damn night. Every week, there's four or five contracts. I don't know why they're doing it, because those guys are going to fight. Those guys will jump in and fight immediately. They won't sit here and say, well, I'm going to take six months off. No, they're hungry. They're dogs. They want to fight. But that's the only thing that should be at the apex, is the Contender Series and the Ultimate Fighter, as long as they continue to have that going on. Other than that, I'll be damned that you sit here and watch have to watch another another top 10 fighter fighting in the main event at the apex in front of 300 fucking people. Like, that's ridiculous. But anyhow, 
that's all I got. I will be watching three, you know, three oh six. I got Marab. I got Ortega if he shows up, and I got Grasso. Let me know what y'all think. Holler at your boy. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, and follow. And I'm not a hater. I love the UFC. I just don't like where it's been going for the last few years, God, the last many years, because stop feeding. When I paid, and before I go, I paid five fifty in eighteen for corner lower bowl seats at the T-Mobile for John Jones and Anthony Smith. And on that card was Ben Askren and Robbie Lawler and Tyron Woolley and Kamar Usman. Paid five fifty. I paid eight fifty for the same damn seats in the triple in the Caseya Center in Miami. For Alex Pereira. No, actually, for no shit. Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley and Chito Vera. And a year ago, in the same damn building, I paid $750 for the same seats in the same area for Alex Pereira and Izzy. Israel Asante. They keep raising the prices. But when they came back from COVID in Jacksonville, which I went to as well, those tickets for Usman Mastidal and that card was stacked. Those tickets were 275 bucks. And a month or so later, when they went to Houston, I went to that too. For Chandler and Oliveira, those tickets were 300 bucks. Relatively the same corner that I sit in all the time. And yet, now these tickets are double. For this shit, I mean, God. For the fights at T-Mobile now, they're triple what it was to go to Jacksonville. And Jacksonville remains, that Masvidal Usman fight card remains the most, the absolute most rabid event I've ever been to. Because you know how most of the time you see people, and I know I'm dragging this a little bit, you most of the time you go, you watch, you start watching the early prelims, and there's like 12 people in the building. By the time eight o'clock hit for the actual prelims, the entire building was full. For the early prelims, there were there was probably between seven to ten thousand people in there because we had been craving like crack addicts a live fight card. We've been craving it for two years, and that shit was seven to ten thousand people to watch the first fight of the night. And by eight o'clock, the place was jam packed. That's all I got. Like, subscribe, follow, ring that bell. Come on now.